Uh, we're going to work on cross string, but before that, uh, uh, I'm going to try something else. Uh, let's say uh, we are new in C++ and we don't know C and C out exist, okay? Um, so we have to use printf to do our stuff. And we want to create our own object to print things for us, okay? So what do we do? Um, this has nothing to do with classes with resources. This is something that I just like you to know. So if I include C as standard input output, and that's uh, essentially the standard input output of C language, stdio.h. And I say uh, using namespace std, okay? So if I want to create something that does my output, Okay, it, it, a class that takes over my output facility stuff that I have. What do I do? We know down to this point, I can actually create a class. I'm going to call that class output. Okay, and output class of mine is going to be responsible to print stuff for me because I don't want to keep doing formatting and things like that. So what I do in here, I'm going to create, this is just a utility class which you got to get used to it. We're going to have classes that are only utility, which means they are only used to carry functions around, okay? Functions that we don't want it to be a non-member functions, we, we put it in a utility class. It's very possible that such a thing exists. But anyways, so class output, and I want to print, uh, let's say, uh, 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 numbers and say uh, character strings and stuff, different stuff like that. If I want to do it, you, we know how it's done. It's very simple. I create a function called, say, called print. And I'm going to put over here integer value. And I'm going to say printf percent %d. And I'm going to put the value in here, right? So now my output knows how to print an integer. If I want to print, a, for example, string, I'll go void, again print, because I can overload functions. I'm going to put constant character pointer, str, let's call it c string, so we know it's c string. And then to print it, I'll go printf uh, c string. Correct? So it prints a string for me. Any problem? Uh, lots of people say, why you're not doing this? Lots of people say, okay, you're printing a string, why you're not doing this? Right? Okay, isn't first argument of printf is, first argument of printf is a string that it prints, right? So this is kind of like having a sandwich like this. You're writing a string format to put a string in it, just put the string over there. It's going to print it, right? No difference. Okay, so um, that's that. Very simple and straightforward. So it's printing now. If I have a main and I want to, uh, uh, I want to write a program per, for this. First, I'm going to put my phone to mute. If I can, sorry. All right, and I'm going to say int main and return zero. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, so I have to first instantiate output, so I'm going to say output. So it's far that's output, so f out, then I'm going to say f out dot print. And I'm going to say my name is Jack. And then I'm going to say f out dot print. Oh, and I am, print, I don't know, 35, f out dot, dot print, uh, years old. Okay, so, and that, that, that because my program prints something for me, right? Very simple and straightforward. So if I run this program, uh, it will run and print, print that silly message. Three years later, four years later, and this is going to happen. My name is Jack, and I'm 35 years old. I hope we don't have a Jack over here that is 29 and I. Anyways, so are we okay with this? Well, we, we 
if you remember, like this is, I didn't do any improvement to, to, to C language down to this point. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. So we want to make it simpler. We, want, we, we were design, trying to design this not to use the ugly format of printf and use the prototyping, uh, use the uh, uh, overloading of functions. So um, I can always remove the number of f outs over there by returning a reference. We know that already. So I can say actually over here, output reference. And in here I can say return this, return me out. And the same thing over here. So output reference and return the owner. So now, because print is returning the owner, that is f out, I can just take that print and put it right over here, correct? And take this print and put it right over here, correct? So it works the same way. It says f out, print, my name is Jack. So first it prints that one using this function, and it returns this. When it returns this, the whole statement that got printed will be replaced by this. What is this? This is f out. So it returns f out. That f out picks up the next print, prints 35, and it's after printing it, it returns f out, correct? And that print prints whatever it is, and at the end, it returns f out that nobody's using and function is over. Are we okay with this? So that's how it happens. So if I run this, it is literally going to work the same way and we're going to have the same thing happening. There's absolutely no problem, correct? Well, now we learned that we can actually do operator overload. Is that correct? So let's change these print statements to operator overload. So I'm going to say operator, left shift, And over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Operator left shift. So essentially, I'm going to actually change the print statement over here with those operator calls. Right? And when I run this beautiful program, it works the exact same way. Still, it's printing. My name is Jack, and I am 35. And I am. 35 years old, same thing, right? But now I can actually use it instead of the operator function name, I can use the operator version of calling it, which means I can remove the operator and do this. Does that look familiar to you? Isn't that C out? That's what C out is. It's simply a function, a class that is using different overloads, receives the values, and uses the good old printf to print them out for you. And because they wanted that f out to be available to you, they actually instantiated O stream inside IO stream header file and made it global to everyone. So the C out that you are using is actually an object of type O stream, and you are using it everywhere. The same thing like C in. They are just using good old scanf to, to read whatever they want. I don't know if they're using scanf behind the scene, but they're using something. OK? Are we OK with this? I just wanted to tell you what C out is, because it looks magical. Oh my god, C++ prints it in a weird way. No, it's not a weird way. It's just operator overload. Now we know. Are we okay with this? Now, of course, they have lots of bells and whistles in here. They have I.O. manipulators, and they have formatting and things like that. So they add properties to that output. So what's going to be the, the width of the next printout? And they're going to use that value to do the width of the next printout if they're, or whatever. You know what happens, right? So that's what it is. Any questions? So we know what C out is. Uh, I'm just going to make 0, 1 and say how uh, O stream 
see how it works. We're done with that. Any questions? And I want to start writing code now. I want to uh, apply all the knowledge that we have with uh, string and also talk about different types of uh, constructors and things to make sure no memory leak happens for classes that have resources outside of their scope. Are we OK? Are we OK, one? Are we OK, two? We are OK. So first thing first, because I do not frankly remember what I've done over there. First of all, let's take this out. For now, the only thing that we need is include uh, uh, string.h and using namespace uh, sdds, hopefully, if I'm not wrong, int main, and return 0. Let's have IO stream 2 include IO stream and using namespace std. All right. <clears throat> A quick a quick review on what we have done with strings, with strings, so we can actually uh, uh, follow whatever we have done uh, and make it better as we go. So uh, we said that if, when we are dealing with a string, a C string, the whole nightmare of C strings is that they are just simply character arrays that are null terminated. And every single logic that you follow, you have to always make sure you're not passing that thing, that backslash n at the end. You have to make sure you, uh, you have one extra character for the, for the null at the end. You have to make sure that uh, the size of the string, when you are combining two strings, the target is big enough to hold the two. You have to do all these things. Essentially, you have to work with arrays when you are dealing with strings in C language. We want to take that away. We want to create a function that deals with all that garbage. Sorry. We want to create a class that deals with all that garbage and essentially creates an object for us that we can use like a variable, as if that variable can hold a, a statement in it. As long as we want, as short as we want, and it can resize itself automatically to the size that it wants, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's what we wanted to do. To do this, we said we have to have the two main things that a string has in C language. Number one, we need to have a character pointer to hold the address of the character array that we are dealing with as a string. Because we are doing all the dirty stuff behind the scene that that string header file is doing in this, fun in this class. So, and the second thing, because I don't want to keep, because I don't want to keep counting the number of characters until, hit, uh, until I hit the null to see what is the size of a string, I'm going to have a variable over there called length and try to keep it updated at all times. So whenever I need to know what is the length of the current string, I have it right over there. OK? Uh, so. It's not an easy thing to do. There are so many, because like, it's really not an easy thing to design like this, to make it completely uh, self-controlled, autonomous, whatever you call it, intelligent. OK? We can't. It's not, it's, we're going to find out that we're going to reach to a point that we're going to say, oh, uh, our string has this problem, that we've got to make sure we are uh, taking care of it. <sighs> So, so the length was one, and the data that is pointing was another one. <clears throat> then we created a default constructor for it. In the default constructor originally, what we have done, in the default constructor originally, what we have done, we, we set the length to zero. 
we created an array of one characters because length was zero, and we set that one to zero. So essentially, what we did originally in our default constructor was to set m length because we wanted an empty string, and we know an empty string in C language is essentially a string that, uh, a character array that has only one element and that element is null. So I, I actually allocated new character and I put one over here. Why didn't I just put character like this? We'll talk about it in a second. Character one, and then I set the first element to zero to make it null. Or if you're afraid of pointers, I made the first element zero. Okay? So this is what I had originally. Why did I do that? Because I wanted my destructor to delete everything the same way. We know that any way we allocate, we have to deallocate the same way. If we are allocating like an array, I have to delete with a square bracket like an array. If I'm allocating a single entity, I have to deallocate without a, without a square bracket. Therefore, I create even an empty string with that. And I don't want my string to have a self-safe empty state. I want it to always be a string. OK? Uh, if we need to go to a safe empty state, if we need it, we're going to do it. Then I uh, said, OK, now that we created an empty string, we need to be able to create a string object out of a legacy C string. OK? For that, we created that constructor, the constructor that accepts a constant character pointer. So the first one essentially did this. With the first one, I can say string A. And I have an empty string. And of course, I had a display over there, so I could do A.display. And it displayed nothing. Right? Right, uh, okay, so that's the thing that we have done. Then we said we want to actually create a string out of another string, already existing string, to be able to say string B is set to uh, hee haw, my favorite phrase, okay? And that's that. So I want to be able to set it to whatever I want. Assignment at the moment of creation is. Um, a, constructor. a constructor that has a single argument. A single argument. This is something that you have to always remember. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a constructor that has only one argument. What is the type of that argument now? Uh, constant character string. A constant character. Oh, pointer. Pointer, thank you. Constant character pointer, okay? Constant character string is the kindergarten version of what we just said, okay? Uh, so constant character pointer, therefore, we, uh, this is going to get called. Of course, I could, call, I could have created it like this. I could have created B like this, like any other variable in C, as I could say integer i0 to set zero to uh, i to zero. I can do that, OK? But I don't want to do it because there's not much fun in it. I want you to understand what is assignment at the moment of creation. That's why I created it that way, OK? So, and that we'll call this one. So to be able to, to actually make my string to be able to, to hold that, what I needed to do was to, <clears throat> was to, was to, was to, was to, First, get the length of the string that is coming in, whatever it was. Then allocate enough space for it plus one for the null character. Then use the string copy from string header file to copy all the information to it. And that was what I did. Well, because I kept repeating it, I say, why do I have to do that in the constructor, I'm going to write a function and recall it every single time I want to do the allocation and the copying thingy. So I created the function and I called it allocate and copy, which essentially does that. And I call that one in my string uh, constructor. And I even use that one 
inside my string header file just to be consistent because it essentially does that. So the code that I just commented up there, it's the exact same thing as down one, the, the one that I have at, down there. It doesn't make any difference. The length of that string is zero, so it's going to be zero plus one. It's going to be one. It's going to be character one, so life is beautiful. Everything's set properly. Then I said, what if actually I want to create a string out of another one? Assignment at the moment of creation is constructor. a call to a constructor which has, has, has one argument. One argument. Thank you very much. What is that one argument type now? Um, wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. It's. What is the type of D? D? Mm -hmm. D is a. What is in line, dot line eight? Tell us what it is. Character pointer? No. No, wait, wait, wait. String. It's a string, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, when I put you in, in spots, suddenly your mind yeah. goes blank. Yeah. I know that for a fact. But you need to not do that. This is actually an exercise of that. You need to be able to suddenly get into a spot and start speaking. Otherwise, nobody's going to hire you, right? You have to be sitting in a meeting and somebody says, oh, Jack, tell me what was the solution to that. And, you go, bip, 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 and then you're out, right? So you have to, I know you know the answer. So. so, yeah, so it's B. So essentially, I'm creating a, I'm copying a string C. Again, I'm not saying C string. Please identify the difference between the two. C string is a constant character pointer holding the address of a character array, okay? where a string now is a class that I'm creating. Therefore, I am copying a B, the B string into C, okay? I am designing a code to do that. Because I am defining what copying is, I have to make sure I am not falling in an endless loop, which means if I want to create a signature of a function that does that, I have to pass something that is not a copy of a string. I have to send either a pointer, that, that doesn't make sense because that thing wasn't a pointer. Then I have to send a reference. So I make sure S over here that is receiving B in that line is not going to be a copy of B. It's just going to be a new name for B. So, and then pass its data to allocate and copy and be done with it. Again, if I do this, I'm going to be in an endless loop. If I do this, I'm going to be in an endless loop. Why? Because when this constructor is being called, S is being passed by value. Because it's being passed by value, essentially it will be with this line I'm talking about. With this line. When you are actually calling, so it's going to be called like this, correct? Because it sets S to B when it's called. Therefore, it's going to call itself to resolve the problem. So essentially, you are calling a copy constructor inside the copy constructor. That's impossible. That's called the rec recursive endless loop. So it's going to keep calling itself and it's going to crash. So we don't want to do that. Because of that, I have to make sure S over here is a reference of what is coming in, and I'll make sure that I'm not shooting myself in the foot by changing it. And now we are good. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Are we okay? All right. So that's a copy constructor. Whenever you need, this is a golden rule for now. Whenever you need a copy constructor, you need an assignment operator overload too. Why? Why do you need that? It was because of problem with bad copying. Remember that? Remember bad copying slides? I'm going to go through it very quickly. It's an important thing to understand. 
Okay? So when you have two classes and they have two pieces of memory allocated outside of their entity, when you set one to another, if you do not implement, if you do not implement the assignment operator, because the two types are the same, C does what it does all the time, which means copying everything blindly from one thing to another, a Xerox copy. So it gets all the content of A and puts them in B, everything. Therefore, where M data of A was pointing, now M data of B is going to point. The size that was 7 will be 7 over here. That gives the illusion of copying. Why? Because when you look at it, you will see that both classes are now pointing to the same piece of memory. And there are some piece of memory left unused in the RAM. Therefore, you're going to have memory leak. But you don't see it. Memory leak is very quiet. That's why you have the Valgrin thingy around your assignment workshops every single time. Another application checking to see if you have memory leak or not. Okay, so then when the first one goes out of scope, its destructor is called and removes the memory. And when the second one is going out of scope, that's when it's going to hit the fan because it wants to delete it and the destructor is going to crash. These type of things Usually, like whenever you are writing a program and everything works kind of okay, and then at the end of the program, when everything's finished, you get a segmentation fault. Right at the end, that's why. Okay? Because now the objects are going out of scope, they are starting deleting their own uh, data, and because the data is already deleted, that's where it's going to crash. And that's, that was bad cop. So we, do, we want to prevent that. To prevent that, we said we need to do proper copying when it actually comes uh, between classes. So if I have two classes and when uh, uh, copying is happening, I have to hack through, hack it, and put my own logic in the way of C's assignment operator. So C++ looks at it and says, OK, there, it is already implemented. How is it implemented? First, I'm going to delete in my logic the target data to make sure it's not there because I want to overwrite it. Then after I do that, I measure the size of the other data and copy it exactly to the same size. And then after that, I'm going to start copying all the information one by one from the other one into this one. Therefore, the second one's going to be exact double copy of the other one. And at the end, I'm going to update the size all by myself. And then when it's done, I have two copies. The first one goes out of scope, no problem. It gets destroyed. The second one goes out of scope, no problem. Each one has its own. I have no memory leak. Are we OK? So this is essentially what we need to do over here, and we have done it. How did we do it? I said, when assignment operator is being called for a C string, first delete my data. OK, which means if in here somebody does this, when somebody does this, this is called. So it says, you want to set me to something new? First, I'm going to wipe out the old stuff. Then I'm going to do the good old allocate and copy, because it's the same thing. I've done it already. What allocate and copy did, remember that? What did the allocate and copy do? It simply uh, measured the size of the thing, allocated, copied, and set the size. It does the same thing again, and we are good to go. Uh, <clears throat> where was allocate and copy? Yeah, there you go. All right? So that was the assignment operator. Then we said, we like our, and we for, I forgot to do something extremely important in here, actually. Um, I, did the copy cons I did the copy constructor, and I did the constructor for the string. I did the assignment for this one, but I didn't do the assignment operator for another object. So I didn't, I didn't program this one. This is done. This is not. 
So that's going to leak. What do I need to do? It's easy. I have already have the code for all of it. So what I'll do in here is this. I'm going to say string reference operator assignment. But at right side, I'm going to have a constant string reference uh, string or s. So I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to come right over here. So I'm going to say string reference string operator plus operator equal constant character is constant string reference s. Sorry, wrong button. Jump down. Where was I? Uh, where was I? Twenty-five. Oh yeah. Sorry. Thank you. S. All right. Okay. And I already have the code in here, right? So I'm just gonna say string S. And it's copied, and I can return it. Are we good with this? Oh, sorry. Return this. Are we okay with this? Anybody okay with this? Shame on all you. You cannot call a constructor. How many times did I tell you that? You are not allowed to call a constructor. What did I do at line 26? I created a temporary nameless string out of that S, and it died. I did nothing. Constructors cannot be called people. Remember that. You can't do that. You cannot call a constructor. Please remember that. All right? Calling a constructor is impossible. It's the wrong thing to do. It doesn't work. Okay? You are not calling a constructor. You are creating a temporary nameless object, and it dies right after. So what do I do in here? I reuse my code. I'm going to say operator equal, and I'm going to say s.mdata. There you go. Done. I call this function. I have a function for it, right? And it's a function. Good old function returns this, so I can simply say return in here. And many people like to do this too. They, they are the same. So you can say return this. You can do that one too. But this is potato. This is potato. I like this one better because it simply, actually, sorry, this point m data. OK, so this is essentially what it is. The problem is that you just, did you just see I made a mistake? This was, again, a recursive call. It would have called itself over and over, and it would crash. I, did, I just made the mistake showing you you could do it this way. So always use the operator's name inside the class itself. It's easier. You know exactly what you're calling. You don't have to translate it in your brain. So I do not suggest doing this because it's just, I don't know. I don't like it. That's my best reason for it. <laughs> Are we OK? So now we have a class that is safe to use, and it's not going to be a memory leak in it. But, Sometimes, classes are unique, like C out. What is C out? C out is a class representing the console, correct? You cannot have two consoles. Console is one entity. It's your output screen. screen, screen. You cannot change it. Like it's your terminal. It represents your terminal. That's your console. Console out. 
You should not have two different ones. You have one cursor running around. You cannot have one going on one cursor. It doesn't make sense. Because it's one entity, nobody should be able to copy it. I should not be able to say O stream A is equal to C out and create a new C out and use that one instead. I can use a reference to it, but when you have a reference, it's essentially the original one, right? No difference. So how can I prevent that? What if I wanted my string, why is it that thing over there like, mm, yeah, what if I wanted my string actually uh, not be able to be copied? So I don't know why I want to do that for a string, but in case your, your, your class, the class that you have, you don't want it to get created, there are two ways of doing it. The reason that I'm giving you the two ways is that um, the other one, you may see it in codes before C++11. What they used to do is to put an empty copy constructor and an empty assignment operator inside the private section of the function of the class. So they essentially made cons copy constructor and assignment co operator private. Because it's private, they could not be called. Therefore, compiler will give you an error if you try to copy it. That's the old-fashioned way. The new way is this. If you want something not to be used, what you can do is this. You can simply say, this is the copy constructor, correct? No, this is the copy constructor. Uh, where's the copy constructor? This is the copy constructor. If you don't want it, you just write the prototype for it, and you write delete in front of it, and you don't implement it anymore. Doing that means the string of mine is not copyable. If your code somehow tries to copy it, it's going to fail. It's going to give you a compiler. It's going to say you cannot call a deleted method. So anything you don't want it to be done, you can delete it. See, this is deleted. I don't want this. I don't want this to happen. So remember that. I'm not going to do it now. Of course, it's stupid. Stu strings are supposed to get copied. But if you ever wanted a class that you don't want the class to get copied or assigned, right in front of the assignment operators, put those things over there and put equal delete, equal delete, which means anybody wants to call these and don't put a body for it. You don't need to implement it anymore. You simply say, these are deleted. I don't want them. Are we OK? Yes. When you remove it, then the default copying of system is going to kick in. And you're going to have memory leak. You want to make sure that no copying will happen of any kind. And then you delete it. That was a good question. He says, look, why just not, not implement it? If you don't implement it, then the copy constructor of the system is going to kick in, and you're going to have memory leak. You don't want that. You want to make sure that copying doesn't happen. You put delete in front of it. So if you don't want it to happen, we want it to happen, so this is, we're not going to do this. So essentially, prevent copying. <coughs> Delete. Delete. Did I already? Yeah. So in here is going to be prevent assignment. OK? So if you want to do that, you can do it. We are not going to do it, just letting you know that it's possible. Are we OK with this? What did I do? Are we OK? <clears throat> All right. Now, there is something over here that's kind of itchy, is the fact that I have so many operator overloads, and I, and I have to keep calling display over here. Let's get rid of that by overloading C in and C out right now. 
OK? So let's do that right now. So get over with it, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be fine, right? So uh, if I want to do C out, what do I do? Uh, so essentially, if I want to do C out, I need to have this. I need to have <clears throat> C out, say, A is the same as B. Right? I want to be able to do this. But to do this, I have to make an operator that at left side it, it gets an O stream, at right side it gets a string. So what do I do? I'll come over here under the string header file because it's clo very closely tied to string. I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to say it's operator. It's a helper operator that accepts two arguments. It's a helper non-member operator, OK? Non-member operator. So operator left shift or insertion. And then at left side, I have an O stream reference OS. I cannot make it a constant because C out changes as things are getting printed. And I've got to make sure that this belongs to STD. Do I have STD in here? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to uh, add it to STD. And at right side, I'm going to have a constant string object that is right operand. <clears throat> and of course, for this to be able to continue, which means after this printout, I want this printout to happen. So I have to make sure this operator, I have to make sure this operator leaves a C out behind after. So that C out can pick up and continue the printing after. So what I will do, I will return an O stream over there. And that's a reference to. And implementation is pretty simple. Copy. Before doing that, if you recall, I said from now on, every time you are creating a display, make sure your display receives an O stream. Reference that is defaulted to C out. Always create your functions like this, your display functions. No exceptions. Always. All your display functions should work that way. Now, the next thing we're going to do, first I'm going to fix the string. Oh, fi uh, fix the display. So that's uh, O stream, reference OS. And in here, I'm just going to use OS instead of C out. OS, output a stream, OS. Good people write C out reference. They do something like that, but I'm too lazy. OK? So that's that one. Now, uh, now let's uh, implement the, uh, the function. And to do that, I will do as follow. I'm going to say return write operands display passing the OS to it. And we are done. So essentially, again, I am hacking right through the CN part. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Are we good? Questions? Suggestions? All right, let's go for a break and come back, and then I will continue the rest of it. Of course. I talked to my supervisor, like, I'm from another country, like, right after this kind of break. And then I was wondering, because, like, I want you to have, as this year, not sure if the test will be held on Tuesday or Friday. So, oh, you want to know which one it's going to be? So when are you so when are you leaving? 
Thursday. So I'll do it at the first. Thing. That's okay. And if buddy tells you, no, I'm going to do it on, on Tuesday and, and Wednesday. So you said you're going to leave on Thursday. So I'm going to make the test on Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Okay. So anybody says why you're doing it, I'm going to say his fault. <laughs> Look at the lectures online. I was wondering if I can do like make, make up if I miss anything or do another one. Uh, I don't know. Come back and we'll talk. Let's see how your marks are going to be. Follow the things, follow the, the videos and try to do the labs and stuff offline. Okay. If you have an IP over there, send me your IP. But, but as you see, like, there's no make up of my workshop. Or That's what I'm saying. If you tell me what is your IP, if you ha if you are from a specific IB, IP, wherever you are, mm -hmm. you send me the IP address, I'm going to open the lab for you. Okay. I'm going to open the attendance for you. Okay. You, can, you, can you can hand in the in-lab and at home, and I'll consider it uh, attended. I'll mark it. Okay. Finish everything already. Okay. I went and created the constructor and uh, I created a default constructor and on one argument constructor. Initially, I put the default value for the one argument constructor. Yeah, yeah. So, what happens is that the compiler uh, see that as like the default constructor in case that I didn't pass it. Yeah, of course. So, so you cannot have two of them. It's impossible. Yeah, so, so, I wanted to ask you what would be the best uh, practice in that case? Like, should I still have the default constructor or should it I It all depends on your logic. If your logic with the default value for your argument for single argument constructor works, why not? So, maybe, so you don't have, you don't need to have the default constructor, you just have the Yeah, if, 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 and sometimes you don't even have a default constructor. Sometimes you don't want your object to be defaulted. Yeah. It all depends on your logic. There is no how to do it. You have to see what is the, the logic behind. Right. Okay. And, uh, I guess uh, my other question is because it's just now you, uh, you, you say to the class that you should never call the default constructor. So apparently that in my code, I did that in one of the lines. So, um, and because, because it's, asked, it's asked me to uh, set it back to the, the set empty state. And, my and you, so you put uh, start this is equal to that. You did it this way? Uh, yes. Yeah, not a good way. That works, but it's that, not that a good works. way. So, so my question for you would be... That if if you case, have, that's the case, create a function that does that. They call set empty something. Yeah, and call that one. Okay. But then it's that's very expensive. Yeah, but that, that's going to make it very something very similar to... The, the default constructor. So, so, so call that one. Call the the func that function oh, in default okay, constructor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Question about the uh, Which day is gonna be? Like, it's uh, which section you're in? Uh, this section A and A. No, your A or B. That's a. your your A. You're gonna be on Tuesday. Tuesday. And about reference paper, like, so do you have to print it or you're gonna provide? No, no, no. You do it yourself. Okay. So if we want to, so we have created a set arms function, mm -hmm. or like a set, set empty state for our arms and for our legs. Mm -hmm. And in our robot, we call, we have the constructor which sets it to empty. Can we just use the um, member arms and member things and call the set, set empty functions that happen there? Why not? Okay, just checking. Reuse your code. Yeah, no, no problem. Just want to double check on that. Yeah. Why uh, I try to do the display where you away, right? But I can't use end line. I have to use slash n. Why? I don't know. It's giving me error. No. Where is it? Uh, I don't. End line is. Did you include? Because because. I like namespace std. Using namespace std, yeah. bad boy. Using namespace std. Using yeah, namespace yeah, std. You if you are putting std, you put std in front of everything, right? Yeah, Bad boy you are. Professor, should I resubmit my lab? Huh? Should I resubmit my lab? Why? I didn't put std here. Using std. Did it yeah. compile? Yeah. Did it work? Yeah. You use backslash instead of end lab, end lab right? Yeah. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Um, go ahead. Uh, is there anything wrong with my copying string here? But give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. The, the fact that you're calling that's SDR link too many times pisses me off. 
because you're doing one to see how many times you're calling SDR length. Just at the top, oh, okay. measure the damn thing, put it in a variable, and you reuse the variable. <laughs> yeah, so int var, and that's not JavaScript, yes, int var, yeah, is equal to that one, and now, now that we see. So, yeah, so setting the destination to zero, you're literally screaming that I have no idea how C works. If you are using SDR copy, it will make it null terminated. Oh, Why yeah. do you put a zero oh. at the end? I, I, I put the in here. I forgot to put the in here. Oh, it's SDR N copy. Oh, yeah. yeah if that, to... Then that's, 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 that's perfectly correct. I did the mistake here. And then you have to have the length over there. Yeah. You okay. go up to that length and like the zero, now you're fine. Change my length. And comma length. The, the same length that you're going to do is going to be in SDR N copy. So the, mag, so the length that you are doing is going to be there. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't need to have the SDR in here. This is when the length is bigger than what you have, right? Yeah. You are doing SDR. This is when it's shorter than what you have, correct? The short one. Oh, so well, first of all, I don't, know, I don't know why you're putting an if statement. Why you're not just doing everything as SDR and copy? If it's shorter, it's SDR copy. If it's longer, it cuts it off. Oh, okay. SDR N copy is essentially SDR copy. It works yeah. exactly like SDR, but if it hits the limit, then it stops copying. That's when it's not null terminated. So if you write the code for SDR N copy, everything is set. You don't need an if statement. So basically, I will have my allocation. Your allocation should be to this. So you find out what is the length. You find the length, yes. and you have the allocation based on the length. If it's less than max length, if, it's, if you make it max length. If it's greater than max length, you make it max length. And then you do everything using STR and copy with that. Oh, okay, so I don't have to do it twice. It doesn't even need that. What am I doing? Wait a minute. What does it say? It says copy up to maximum length, right? Yes. So instead of each time allocating memory, we're trying to... I hate writing the code. <laughs> So what, what I'm saying is that, look how much code you have written for the freaking thing. It's good, actually, that, you, that you're learning, but hey, so you got the length of the string, right? Yes. Is that okay? So I'm going to say uh, var, that I would call it length instead of var, but you okay. call it var. Var is set to uh, var being less than uh, 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 max len. If it is, it's var. If it's not, it's max len. Yeah, call it. You should get an appointment for this. I have an appointment on Monday, but I think it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen? No. Yeah, I know. So, so that's the thing. So var, if it's less than max len, var is going to be. If it's not, max len is going to be there. And then forget about all these. Oh, that's for the... There's an offer. So, so that is, these all should happen inside. This all should happen inside this. And you don't need any else schmutz. What, what's going on? I hate this. Go there. What is that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Stupid help that it doesn't just... The, the AI just pops up. Else? You don't need that. You don't need that. So you're getting the length. You set the length to either var or max len. Yeah. Okay. Then you do that. Then you do SDR copy and you're done. And I have to change this max length to war, right? Yeah, that becomes var. This is var. This doesn't need to be SDR and copy anymore because you allocated exactly the same size as you want. And I removed Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it is SDR and. It needs to be SDR and. Yeah, it needs to be SDR and. So this is var. And this is going to be VAR. Uh, 
Okay, so what happens is that it finds out which one it is, it's going to set to that one, then set the proper size and do an SDRN copy over here. The SDRN copy over here only gets activated when it actually goes to max. So, or you can, yeah, that's it. And I never knew about this syntax. Go back to IPC 14. It's our conditional operator, you bad boy. Conditional operator. That's an if statement. I have submitted my lab on the Wednesday, uh, like uh, in the uh, after that uh, afternoon. Mm -hmm. Like you said that it will be due. Uh, like I fixed midnight. it. I fixed it. It you came. Fixed it, but it was showing late submission to me. I have submitted really? it. Really? That's fine. I'll fix it. Okay. Right. I have submitted it. Okay. It was showing late submission to me, okay. and I, I have emailed you also. Beautiful. No problem. Uh, okay. Tomorrow I, I think I fixed you. it. Yesterday I had emailed you, but it was showing late, late submission. That's okay. That's very fine. No, oh, okay. thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Oh shoot! Uh, this recording is going to take some time to come up because. I forgot to pause it, and I was talking to people. They're all recorded. So I have to take that out. It takes time. I have to edit it. So the video is not going to come out this quickly. Anyways, but what I'm saying is that uh, to do C in, it's a little different, OK? To do actually implement C in, it's going to be a little different. So There is a way to do a C in. There is a way to do a C in that can get any length. Okay. The reason is that when you are typing on the keyboard. Okay. Now uh, we have a dynamic string over here, and we want to do C in. Correct. We want to actually read stuff from the from the user. How do we know how how long how many characters user is going to type? You don't know, right? So I can have a big temporary thing, say, OK, nobody's going to type more than 2,000 characters. So I'm going to have a temporary 2,000 character string over there, get it from user. Then, re then after getting it from user, I can resize that and see uh, uh, if uh, yeah, and then resize that, the size of the string, to whatever user is entering. And if user is entering more than that, I can just truncate it. Say, OK, if you are entering it more than 2,000 characters in one output, you're crazy. I'm just going to make it 2,000 and, and cut it off. I can do that, OK? There is a 10% Ten percent is too much. Five percent prize for somebody who can overwrite the C in for this, so it can get any size entry from input. Okay, I'm gonna do the two thousand thingy. So make C in to work for any size. What I'm going to do essentially now is to go to my util. So let's first write it. So C in essentially is going to be like this. So in here, I'm going to say uh, C out. Uh, enter a string, right? Now I want to go C out, C in, A. Right? And I can do, like I can say, enter two strings. I can do that too. Wow. Forget it. Uh, enter a string. So I, I'm going to do C in A like that. And I want to read it. OK? At left, I have C in. At right, I have string. And I want it to continue. If, I want, if they want to read something else, I, be able, they, I want them to be able to do it after that. So I have to uh, write it exactly like this one. So essentially, this is going to be, this is going to be the, The prototype for it. So it's going to be I stream operator right shift I stream 
let's call it IS. And this is not going to be constant. It's going to be just a regular string like this. Are you okay with this down to this point? Now, I need to have a read function in here. So my read function should work like this. STD iStream reference read STD iStream reference IS being set by default to STDCN. It's exactly like the other one. Now I have to implement this, so I have to, so writing the code for the iStream is two seconds. So all I need to do is to just copy this and have the exact same thing happening here. So essentially go this way, write iStream. Operator right shift, I stream, IS, that is the right operand, and it's not display, it's read, IS, correct? Now, the task is to actually write the read. That's the difficult part. So the read that I wanted to do. So I'm going to copy that read, C in, and well, where do I put it? I want to put it right beside the display. There you go. All right. So I stream read, and it belongs to string. How do we do it? I am lazy. I'm just going to go and copy the code that I had from read. I've already done this in read. Remember that? Where is my read? Uh, where did I put the read? Uh, it was in workshop somewhere. You know where the workshop, uh, which workshop was it in? Anybody? What? The utils. Or this one is through there? Sure. We have it here too? No, we don't. Was it a do it yourself? No, that's not the one. So it was two. Somewhere I put. Yes, there you go. So utils.cpp. Not that one. Yeah, I want this one. Okay, so just want to copy this. Now the difference is that over here I'm getting a length. I'm going to put it up over there and we'll see. So I'm going to copy copy the code. Remember I told you hacking? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm putting it in here. Now I have to see how I can make, make this thing work. All right? I have to think, how can I make this thing work? I have two ways of doing it. Number one, what's the time? I have 12.30 ends, or 25. 30 or 25? 30, OK. I have two ways of doing this. First of all, no error message. OK, if it's up to a certain length, then I'm not going to show an error message. I'm just going to uh, cut it off. I want to make it short, short, short. Uh, or I can show an error message. We'll come up to it soon, OK? So I'm going to say too long of a string to print it again. Although we shouldn't do that, but hey. Uh, the best thing is to leave it uh, as failed. But give me two seconds. Let me get on with this. How do I do this? I can have a certain length. So this one had a length, right? So I can create something in here. That Boolean, OK, I don't want it because I don't want to return it. What I can do over here is I can say a character str, right? I can say character str say 2048, a big one, and then uh, set this one to 2047 or 2048, 2048. 
And again, I'm going to postpone it because it's, I am overriding CN. If it fails, CN is going to fail. I'm going to let the user of this program decide what to do with it. So I'm going to do a get line, OK? And actually, life is so beautiful when you don't want to do validation. If it fails, yeah. That's it. Return this. I wanted to do validation, but then I said the heck with it. I'll tell you why. Return uh, is. Now, the whole point. So if gets line gets up to those characters and it's done with it, right? So what I can do over here is this. I can have it. I can do, a, do, do the user a favor and don't put hidden logic over here. I'm going to say if c in dot fail. No, uh, so no, I don't even need to do that. I don't need, even need to do that. Let me just check something before we continue. Yeah. So what happens over here is this. It tries to read 2,048 characters. And then it, it, after doing this, that get line thingy, if it fails, and that str over there, when it, if it successful and it reads it, all I need to do is to set it to the value that I have. So I'm going to say if is.fail, if it not failed, so not is fail, I simply say operator equal operator equal, and I'm going to set it to SDR. We know we have the logic for it, right? And then I'm going to return IS, OK, down to this point. So there's no problem with this. The problem is the hidden logic here. I have 2048 over there. How the heck the, the user of my string is going to know what is the length of this thing, the maximum length? OK? If I'm a good programmer, what I would do, I will give the user the choice for the size of the string that uh, my read is supposed to read. I am designing the object. I am the master. I'm the boss. I can do whatever I want. So instead of doing that, I'm going to create over here an integer. I'm going to call it max read length. OK? So I'm going to have a maximum read length. Then I'm going to create a setter and getter for it. In my constructors, I can set it to a default value, whatever I want it to be. So I can go to my constructors and initialize that gigantic thing that I created over there. I can initialize that value to whatever I want. So I'll go to my constructors, and I'm going to say, where are my constructors? So in here, I'm going to say 1,024. So by default, I'm going to set the value to 1,024 to all of them. Do you remember what is this that I'm writing? It's the initialization area. Remember that? So by default, the maximum read length will be 1024, correct? Are we OK with this? And I'm going to use that in my reading. So essentially, in here, When I am reading, instead of doing that, I'm going to say character string is set to new plus one, right? And I'm going to put maximum length over here, new character, of course. And in any scenario, when I'm done, I'm going to delete that. String. So what I'll do, I create the size that I want, right? And I will delete it afterwards. Now all I need to do is to give the user of my string class, another programmer, capability to change that value if they need it. So what I will do, I'm going to go to my prop to my uh, uh, functions, and I'm going to actually write 
a uh, couple of access, uh, accessors over here. I'm going to say int max read length or max c in read, max c in length. So they know exactly what I'm talking about. So int max in length const, that returns what it is. And I'm going to have void max seeing length. integer value, and that's going to set it. So I'll give the user to chance to see what is the length that I have now, and if I don't like it, I can change it to whatever I want. So in here, I'm saying string max length const return max read length and in here I am going to set max read length oh that's a string to the value of course there are going to be validations you have to check make sure Make sure if, if the value is negative, do this and that, or even set max read length to an unsigned integer instead of that. I'm not going to go through the details of that. When I post the code, I'm going to put the proper one. But this is what I'm saying. So essentially, if they want, if they are OK with 1024, it's going to be 1024 in the read. If they are not OK, they can simply say, OK, I do not want it to be more than 40 characters, so I want this string's maximum C in length to be 40. Other than that, it fails. And then they do their C in. And they're done. OK? So like this, they can actually set exactly what the C in is supposed to read. If they want it five, they want to, they want to read a file. And they want it to be 4 million characters. Put 4 million over there. It's going to read a file for you. OK? So you can set it like that. Now, my string over here, and then all the good stuff that we have done over there, they are already here, and I'm going to add more to it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this lab. So next time we are coming in, we're going to do this all together. We're going to add features. So I'm going to put a few features over there, put you in groups, and each group is going to add a feature to this string. We want to add plus plus, postfix and prefix. Why? To add a space before or after a string. So if you want to have a string to be added, a space to be added before the string, you do plus plus a. If you want a space to be added after a string, you do a plus plus. We're going to do plus equal. It's already there. We're going to do minus equal. We're going to do resize and all these good stuff. OK? So we're going to do that for the next day. For now, this is what it is. I'm going to check it out, make sure everything works. I'm not going to test it now. I'm going to test it in the office. And when everything's OK, I'm going to put the debugged version on the internet and edit the YouTube video and put it up. So first, it's going to be private. So you're going to see a private thing listed when I edit it and remove those private discussions that we have during the break. Because people literally came over here and asked for extension for this and that, and I was talking about it. So they all have to go. It was getting recorded. Uh, any questions down to here? Yes. Oh, what was the 5%? Okay. Okay, I'll give you 5% for the first test. I add 5% to your first test. I'll add 5% to your first test if you can make this automatic. Which means... There is no max length over there. And when it's reading, it's going to detect what is the size and resize itself automatically based on user's input. If you can do that, send me the code. You get 5% for your first test. No, as many, as long as you. But of course, if I see five solutions identical, then I'm going to ask you to come and explain what you have done. OK? So if you are writing a code and want to give it to your friend, make sure they change it properly. <laughs> <laughs> and they know what they are doing, because I literally got to ask you to come and explain how your code works. OK? 
So again, and, and test it vigorously. Just don't do something, oh, it worked for three characters, I'm going to submit it. No. Okay? So minus 5% for the first test if you send me a wrong thing. That doesn't work. It has to work. Test it. Test it, test it. I, I don't give marks for free. You have to work for it. Should I make it 10% make it juicier? Yeah.